you've got questions about money, well, we have the man to answer those questions. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Good to be with you again today, sir. Oh, it's so good to be with you because I have a question that's so right up your alley. I know you're going to love this one. The IRS has extended the administrative transition period for the new requirement that higher income participants in a 401k and similar retirement plans must designate any catch-up contributions as after-tax Roth contributions. And now the period ends in 2026 instead of 2023? Was that English, Bob? I don't know. It's from the IRS website. I know. I think what you're saying is that we got guidance recently that says that the rule that prevents individuals who have high income, those with more than $145,000 of wages, from being able to make their catch-up contributions to a pre-tax, in other words, tax-reducing, like traditional 401k, traditional 403b account, that was supposed to kick in in 2024 per SECURE Act 2.0. But thanks to guidance we've just received from the IRS, we now know that that won't happen until 2026. So the good news for high earn, earning wage, uh, excuse me, uh, okay, I'm going to take it from there, Eric, sorry. So the good news for high income wage earners is that next year in 2024 and the following year in 2025, they'll still have the freedom to choose whether they want to make their catch-up contributions to a pre-tax plan account or to a Roth account. After that, though, they will need to begin to make those contributions to the Roth side of the plan only. And the whole reason this is happening is because after this law was introduced last year, plans basically had one year, because remember, Secure Act 2.0 wasn't passed until December 29th of 2022. And this law was supposed to take effect 2024. So plans had very little time to adopt Roth provisions, to educate participants, to get forms out, to get forms back, to process the forms, implement systems, et cetera. And so that's really why the IRS extended this administrative period to give plans more of a time to appropriately address this issue. Yeah. So bottom line, everyone seems that this has been a positive development for both plan participants, plan sponsors, and uh, and I don't know, CPAs. Well, it'd be hard to argue that this is a negative in any way, because it's just giving people more choice for a few more years and plans a little bit more time to comply with the changes. However, it is worth noting that there are some other elements of this notice that could affect individuals. For instance, uh, the there was some question in the wording of the SECURE Act text as to whether or not anyone would be able to make catch-up contributions in 2024 and future years, because it looked like the IRS, or excuse me, it looked like Congress actually deleted the wrong paragraph of the law, so to speak. Well, the IRS came out and they found a legislative or statutory basis to continue to allow catch-up contributions. So those who were worried they were going away can now rest easy. Um, in addition, the other thing that the IRS did was it said, we're going to accept commentary on this, but here's our current best thinking. This rule will only apply to wage earners as wages are defined under the, uh, the FICA Act, in other words, for Social Security purposes, and not to other individuals. And Bob, you may not recall this, but after the law initially came out, this was something I pointed out. I said, it looks like self-employed individuals and partners are going to be exempt from this because they don't have wages. And in fact, that is what the IRS has now determined, uh, pending some comments. So this is not the final decision, but it's likely to be how they end up going on this. So self-employed individuals and partners will actually have a little bit of an edge compared to their high-earning, wage-earning counterparts out there in the world. Yeah. So uh, I know you said that folks were worried about this. I think when people have worries around money, there's one place to go where they can sort of alleviate those worries, yes? That's right. I'd like to wager that if they send us a question, we'll send them back an answer. So if you've got a question, give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing your questions in our inbox real soon. Mm -hmm.